Well, good morning, church, and welcome to another Church in the House this morning. I hope that you are are able to gather with some friends, some family, and share some time together as we do church in the house together in your homes, in your houses, Uh, because the church is not a building. We, God's people, are the church. So let's gather together and let's have church together. Um, So just a few things before we get into today's message and hear our wonderful kids chat from Meg. Uh, Just a couple of announcements. Please make sure that you are checking your weekly newsletter from Cheryl. She does a great job putting that together for us. And there is some great information about all the things that we are doing as a church. Um, There is some exciting news. If you didn't hear last week, we are moving back to services in our building from this coming week, the 27th of March. Uh, More info will be coming out this week about that and how to register for our services. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, We've also got our pajama drive happening where we're going to be collecting uh, pajamas for children over... Uh, it's going to be over Easter weekend. I think we can, we're can. we going to be collecting them. But I'm sure if you want to drop them off at the office before then, Cheryl would love to have them. There is just, there's still a lot going on. We are still collecting money for the Ukraine. If you would like to make a donation and we will give you guys the figure of what we got to uh, for that. So please, yeah, check out the news either and see all the cool stuff that we are doing as a church. So uh, with all that in mind, I'm going to hand over now to Meg for our kids spot. So kids, get settled in, get nice and relaxed, um, get out your Bibles, get some things to take some notes with and hear from Meg. So let's hand over to Meg now. Hi everyone, welcome to church. Today we are talking about fruits of the spirit still and in particular we are talking about joy. Now I wonder if like a lot of people you sometimes confuse joy with happiness. So I did a little survey with some of the kids that I know and asked them what some of the things are that makes them happy. And here are some of the things they came up with. I've written them on this balloon. I'm not sure how easily you can see it. But we've got things like gaming, friends, lollies, pets, special toys, there's lollies, pump tracks, bike rides, holidays, good books, and so on. So those are some of the things that make people happy. I've got another balloon here that represents joy. This one's purple. We're going to talk about that one in a minute. So now happiness comes from all the things that happen around us, right? Happy, But when we are confronted with some trouble, I've got a candle over here, and our happiness Maybe, maybe we lose our gaming rights for a day or two or our screen time. Maybe we don't have toys. Maybe our friends disappoint us. Maybe your mum says, no lollies or something like that. And what does that do to our happiness? Oh, prepare yourselves. <laughs> it doesn't last, does it? So happiness is about the things that happen around us. And um, when those things go away, the happiness goes away. But I want to talk to you about joy. So joy is something that is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And that means it comes from God, from His Holy Spirit. And it's not about whether we have all the toys we want or the lollies we want or we get to go to the parties or um, see our friends on any given day. Joy is knowing, I wonder if you'll be able to see this, Joy is knowing that God is good, always. It's about knowing that God has a plan for you and for me and for everything. It's about knowing that he loves me. It's about knowing that Jesus saves. And what I don't know if you can see in the camera is that inside this balloon, I put a little bit of water and that water represents the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is what gives us this joy. We can't just get it on our own. We have to get it from God through his Holy Spirit and we get it through praying. We get it through uh, reading our Bible and listening to the word. We get it from being around supportive Christians who can help us on our journey 
and we get it from the Holy Spirit. And so joy, it has all the same good feelings as happiness, only it goes so much deeper. And when we don't have lollies anymore, or our friends disappoint us, or maybe we don't, uh, we can't go on the pump track this week, or we get sick and can't see our friends, or we don't have our special toys, look at that. Nothing happens. The joy doesn't go away. It might get a little stained on the bottom, but it doesn't pop the way, the way that happiness does. I want to read you a story from the Bible about a couple of people who I think uh, show us how you can have joy in quite trying times. So, this is a story from Acts 16, roughly 24 to 34. And it's about a guy called Paul. So this is in the New Testament. Acts is the book after the Gospels that's telling us about how the early church was established after Jesus had, um, had been and died and risen again. And what did his followers do? And this is about Paul. Now, Paul um, wrote a lot of the letters in the New Testament, and he went on a lot of missionary trips all around the um, that Mediterranean area and was responsible for spreading a lot of the news of the wonderful things that Jesus did. Now on one of those trips he was traveling with his mate Silas and when they got to a particular town some people did not like Paul and his friend Silas teaching about Jesus and the Bible tells us they were actually arrested Paul and Silas's clothes were ripped. They were ordered into public beatings. They were thrown into jail under heavy guard and their feet were chained in iron. But at about midnight, do you know what Paul and Silas were doing? I think if I were in prison at midnight, having been beaten and embarrassed in the middle of a town just for talking about Jesus, I'd be feeling pretty miserable. But what they were doing was praying. And they were singing. They were singing robust hymns to God. I wonder what you would sing to God if you needed to sing to praise him in difficult times, what your favorite song would be. While they were doing it, the other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. So they were such an amazing witness. They had joy and were worshiping God because he doesn't change when our situation changes, does he? Then, without warning, a huge earthquake. The jailhouse tottered, every door flew open, all the prisoners were loose. Startled from sleep, the jailer saw all the doors swinging loose on their hinges. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he pulled his sword out and was about to do himself in, figuring he was as good as dead anyway, when Paul stopped him. <gasps> Don't do that! We're all still here. Nobody's run away. The jailer got a torch and ran inside. Badly shaken, he collapsed in front of Paul and Silas. He led them out of the jail and asked, Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved, to really live like you do? They said, put your entire trust in the Master Jesus. Then you'll live as you were meant to live, and everyone in your house included. So they went on to have dinner at this jailer's family's house. He dressed their wounds, um, and he and his family were even baptized. The jailer was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. So Paul and Silas left the jailer, they left town, and they had a chance to tell even more people about Jesus. Now, I think that's a great story about joy in difficult situations. And I've heard of stories very recently where people um, in the middle of really hard times could still turn to God and pray and sing hymns because we know that God does not change when our situation changes. And we can have that joy because God is good always. And that's where the joy comes from. So this week, while I wish you a happy week, I also wish you a joyful week where you know that you are loved, where you know that God is good. 
when you know that he has a plan for your life and you can let that joy overflow so that you can influence other people just the way Paul and Silas did. Bye. Thank you so much, Meg, for that. Kids, I hope you got a lot out of what Meg had to say today. I just want to honor Meg um, and all that she does for us in our kids' church and through our kids' spot. You know, she is giving of her time freely into making sure that our kids are hearing about God and engaging with us in scripture and engaging with us in our church community, which is so, so important. So can we just like say a big thank you to Meg and just honor her for all that she does. She just does an amazing job. Thank you so much, Meg. Um, so today, church, we are continuing on our series, looking at fruit of the spirit as today we look at joy. If you haven't seen last week's message, um, can I recommend that you go back and watch it? As um, At the start of the message, we do kind of an overview of the fruit of the Spirit, um, which really helps guide our series. But in order to just give you a really quick overview, the fruit of the Spirit, which is a big S, talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, uh, is a list of evidence that the Holy Spirit is living within us and working through us as God's people. Paul chooses fruit very specifically. And what we can take away from that is uh, growth of the fruit. First of all, growth of the fruit is gradual. That while we may not see it happening, much like fruit, uh, one day we notice that it's there. Uh, the second point, that fruit is inevitable. That if we are living in the spirit, the fruit will burst through. Uh, it's going to be part of the very nature and fabric of who we are. We're going to grow great fruit if we're living in the Spirit. The third point is that the fruit of the Spirit has internal roots. In that it is not just about our traits and our characteristics, but the Spirit working in and through us. And finally, that it is symmetrical. That real fruit always grows together. And that you do not to get just get one part of the fruit of the Spirit without the other parts growing. We should see all the fruit that we talk about, all the parts of the fruit growing in our lives. So like I said today, we're looking at joy. And to start with, I'm going to give you a great definition of joy that can be found in Tim Keller's book on Galatians. Galatians for you, I mentioned this book Last week, I highly recommend it to you, so go grab a copy for yourself if that's something that would be helpful for you. Um, and then we're going to spend some time in the message breaking it down, breaking down this definition he gives us by looking at Luke 24 verses 33 to 53. So here we go, a definition of joy. Joy, a delight in God for the sheer beauty and worth of who he is. It's opposite is hopelessness or despair and its counterfeit is an elation that is based on experiencing blessings not the blesser causing mood swings based on circumstances i know that's a lot so i'm going to repeat it for you because it's really important there's some great stuff in there that's our three points the first point a delight in god for the sheer beauty and worth of who he is our second point its opposite is hopelessness or despair and our third point and its counterfeit is an elation that is based on experiencing blessings not the blesser causing mood swings based on circumstances so let's get into our text in luke 24 to give you some context of what has just happened jesus has been crucified and has risen from the grave and appeared to some of his woman followers who have gone and shared the encounter with the men then jesus appears to some male followers and while they while they're walking along uh, the road but god kept them from recognizing him and they're gone to explain to jesus all that had happened to jesus without recognizing jesus and as they share communion with him they finally recognize who he was and then he disappears upon their recognition and they rush to tell the disciples of uh, all that has happened to them. And it's here that we find our text. So would you open up your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 24. And we're going to read from verse 33. And within the hour, they were on their way back to Jerusalem. These are the followers that Jesus has just appeared to. 
There they found the eleven disciples and the others who had gathered with them, who said, The Lord has really risen. He appeared to Peter. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking along the road and how they had recognized him as he was breaking the bread. And just as they were telling them about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened, he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost because ghosts don't have bodies as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still, they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. Then he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said, yes, it is written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him, and they then returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. And they spent all their time in the temple, praising God. Hey, let's open in prayer, church. Let's do that together now. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for the the history that we have of seeing what the disciples went through with you, God. We're so grateful that we get to share in that story. And Lord, as we talk about joy and we, we come with all the things that we hold uh, dear to us, we come with all the troubles and worries that we carry with us. We come with all the joys and happinesses that we have to share, God. I just pray that we can um, lay them at your feet, show them to you and, and be able to hear this message today and may it speak into every situation of our lives and of our hearts, God. I pray these things in your mighty name, Lord. Amen. So I love watching videos of soldiers surprising their families uh, coming home from like deployment and things like that. Uh, whether it's their kids or a parent or a spouse or more current videos that some of us have seen of families who live across the ditch being able to be reunited uh, with families after many years apart. The parts I love about the videos are watching the realization across the person's face um, that they are standing there with the person that they just dearly love and that person being right there in front of them in the space, in the same room with them. Oh, and I love that first hug. It just melts my heart. Miles and distance finally gone and the physical human connection just right there. This person who they have missed beyond words, now they're just enveloping them in this beautiful embrace. I can only imagine the elation of the disciples at the sight of Jesus with them in this upper room scared out of their minds thinking they'd seen a ghost but the realization of Jesus alive and conquering death as they examine his hands and his feet you know verse 41 says they stood there in disbelief filled with joy and wonder to experience joy is to have a delight in God 
for the sheer beauty and worth of who he is, filled with joy, wonder, and delight at who God is. You know, it's always interesting that um, the disciples spend so much time with Jesus. They spent all of Jesus' ministry with him, and yet they never really fully grasped who Jesus was. And we understand that when we read the scripture. In verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He explained to them who he was. They could finally grasp and understand all that they had seen Jesus do, all that they had witnessed him uh, do on the cross. And his resurrection was finally made clear of what the, the law and the prophets had been speaking about, all that Jesus was able to fulfill through through his death and through his resurrection and through his ministry. And there their eyes had been opened. They finally got to see who Jesus was. And that just filled them with great joy. Can you remember a time when you have been overwhelmed by how amazing God is? Church, when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is working within us, joy in who God is should be evident for all to see. He calls us not to be frightened, but to come and see he is the real living God for those scales to be removed from our eyes and for us to see clearly who God is, who Jesus is, to see his hands and his feet, to see his body that was broken for us, the price that has been paid and that we get to have a real living relationship with him, just as the disciples did. In verse 49, Jesus says to the disciples, I will send you the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. We are blessed to have the Holy Spirit living within us. Mm -hmm. You know, like that person longing for that family member in those videos that lives far away. And then they hug them so tight um, as if to make them one person. It's like they're trying to squeeze them together that tight. We have an even closer relationship with the, than that with God. To have the fruit of joy is to know God, to see his glory, and to know that we are blessed with having a deep relationship with him. Now that we know what joy is, let's talk about what joy is not. So our second point is that joy is the opposite of hopelessness and despair. We meet our disciples in the midst of utter sadness. You know, they've just lost Jesus in the most, one of the most heartbreaking ways. Some abandoned him. Others denied knowing him. So they would have had this mixture of grief and guilt that I can just imagine would be so overwhelming. And as they see Jesus return, there is disbelief in what their eyes are seeing. And at the same time, absolute joy. Their fear and pain and grief is driven out at seeing Jesus. You know, sometimes we just have a really tough week. And this week has been a really tough week for me. And I know that for others of us, this season, this season of life has been really tough. There's so much going on, not only in our world, in our personal lives, in our church. There's, there's a myriad of things. And... Sometimes that can lead to despair and it can lead to a feeling of hopelessness and it can lead to a feeling of grief. And what I want to say to us church is I'm not saying that we're not allowed to despair at the hard things that we go through in life. We cannot tell someone to feel a certain way. What the scriptures is, are saying to us what it means to have joy in the spirit is that we don't need to feel hopeless about our relationship with God and we do not need to despair in our faith. We are human. We've been created to be human. We are going to feel a range of emotions when life is tough, when people hurt us, when we lose someone, when we the things that we hope for don't happen. But when the Spirit is living in us, 
even in those circumstances, we can look to God and find joy in being His and the closeness that we get to share in our relationship with Him. We don't have to doubt in who we belong to. How awesome is that? Don't ever take that for granted, church. I think we take it for granted too often. I know I'm guilty of that. But let us never doubt who we belong to. We don't have to feel that we are not good enough for God. We don't have to despair that our issues and our circumstances are too much for God or that they will drive God away from us. Take joy, my friends. Delight in the God who loves you and makes you worthy. Delight in the God who made the heavens and the earth and still loved you so much he came back for you. If that doesn't just spark so much rest and peace in your heart, I just really hope it does. For those of you who are carrying heavy burdens, I pray that you can understand that joy isn't about happiness. And we live in a culture where we are told to pursue happiness with all that we are. Our happiness is essential and our happiness should be the focus of our lives. Happiness is a cheap commodity. It comes and it goes. It, it, it's not forever. And it lets us down when, when we expect to be happy, when we expect things to go our way and they don't. Joy is very different to happiness. Joy is saying, I know who God is and I will celebrate and I will honor and I will glorify him and I will praise him because of who he is, not what he's done who he is, not the blessings that he might pour upon me, but who God is and knowing that I belong to him, that you and I are brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are church family because what God has done for us, who he is, has been able to set us free. And so we can hold pain and, de and despair and hurt and joy at the same time and know that God is with us and that the spirit of joy can flow through us through any season. That's the hope that I am holding on to today. Don't let hopelessness drain you of your joy. Hold on to joy to fill up your tank of hope, of knowing that the God of the universe loves you so incredibly much. Our final point is is that joy's counterfeit is an elation that is based on experiencing blessings, not the blesser causing mood swings based on circumstances. Church, if our joy is only based on what God does for us and not who he is, we are not experiencing joy that is a spirit filled and coming uh, from a life filled in him. If our joy can only be found when God answers our prayers in the way we want, then we are using God like a candy machine. It means when the answer we get is not what we're hoping for, what happens? We doubt. We get angry at God and our faith is based on how we feel about God's response to our circumstances instead of who God is. To only find joy in what God does instead of who he is, is not a relationship. And if that is the only way we can find joy in God is through answered prayer in the way we want it to be answered, perhaps it is time for us to spend some time in reflection. Church, I know for some of us, joy can be a hard thing. Life is tough and God doesn't want us to have to pretend that life is all happy and, and sweep our stuff under the rug. What the Holy Spirit gives us is space to delight in God, to know him intimately and know that no matter what happens in life, we can say God is good. <laughs> that there is joy to be taken in belonging to God. And my hope and my prayer is that whatever season life finds you in, that the Holy Spirit will fill you with the joy of the relationship that we get to share and our amazing God. That is my hope for us, church. That is my prayer for us that 
we can delight in who God is through every season. And that is the way that we will be a light in our community to show people who God truly is and to see the lost come to be found when they see difficult circumstances that we live in and yet we have joy in Jesus, that we hold on to something more powerful than the circumstances that set to define us. We know who defines us. It is God. So church, I pray that the Holy Spirit would work the fruit of joy in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we delight in who you are. We thank you so much for the Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you so much for the connection that we have, that that the Holy Spirit dwells within us, that we have such a close relationship with you. And Lord, like a like any family member that we are so happy to see, Lord, that we long to keep keep close to. God, you are you just want to embrace us the same way. And Lord, I pray that as your people, we would seek to delight in you, that we would look for moments in our day to see seek opportunities to say, God, you are good and God, you are mighty and God, you deserve all the praise. And for us to be continuously overwhelmed at the amazing God that you are. And we thank you so much for all you do for us. We thank you for the things that we see, the things that we don't see, the things that we recognize and the things that we don't recognize. God, we thank you for all those things you do for us. But Lord, what we want to celebrate and the joy that we find is not in what you do, but who you are and that you seek to have relationship with us. We thank you so much for that, God. May we spend time in prayer and praise and worship just thanking you for who you are and all you do for us lord for those of us who are carrying heavy things heavy burdens in our hearts for heartache and pain for the the life that is just a struggle for some lord i i pray that they can still delight in you that they can still see you walking through those circumstances with them. And that when hardship comes our way, that that won't define who you are. We know the word says who you are. I pray that the promises of God and the the truth of God and, and all that you are, the character that we see in your word, that's what we will delight in. That's what we will take joy in. That's what we will recognize as who you are, God even in the midst of pain and heartache. So be with us, I pray. Be with us as your church. And we just pray that we continue to honor you as as your people. We pray these things in your mighty name, Lord. Amen. Hey, church, that's us for this week. I just, again, I pray that the words spoken today won't just be a nice message to hear, but something that really speaks to us, something that we can really connect with and say, God is working something in our lives as as his people. But as you go, church, I just want to pray this over you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you peace. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and see some of you in the building next week. All right. Bye.